Okay. Now the good news is we're not going to go into um, complicated integration when it comes to this. Um, engineers have made it very easy for us to identify appropriate formulae or formulas to work out the value of i based on the sectional profile. Okay, so it's the cross section that we're interested in. Um, in the past, a lot of students have made that mistake of assuming that when we look at the formula, particularly for rectangular sections, we're looking at it from a longitudinal perspective. No, we're looking at it from a lateral perspective. So let's assume that this is the B. This cross section here is when you cut uh, the given beam, what you see here in relation to where the load is being applied, that is the point of interest. Okay, so there we go. So these are some standard formulas that can be used in calculating or predicting the second moment of area. So when it comes to a rectangle, I is equal to B times W cubed over 12. Now I'm going to go into a little bit more detail in terms of the interpretation of this so that students don't make that mistake assuming that B is the width and W is the length. There is a, a rationale behind that, so we want to talk about that in a bit. When it comes to the circle, i is equal to pi d to the power of 4 over 64. So d is essentially the diameter of a uh, beam with a circular cross-section. For a beam that has a triangular cross-section, i is equal to the base times the height cubed over 36. For a beam section with a, poly, a polygon x profile, I is equal to 5 root 3 over 16 times S to the power 4, and S is the length of the given side. This only applies to a regular polygon. So we need to be very careful. And when it comes to a square, it's simply I is equal to B to the power 4 over D. So that's kind of like a variant of that. So assuming that B and W are more or less equal, that more or less characterizes the square, and this is where you use this formula. So it's just one of the size to the power of four divided by 12. Okay? So these are standard formulas that you can find in any mechanics of material textbook. So this brings us to my explanation regarding what the notation really characterizes. So as shown, it doesn't really matter what um, the variables are. It's more about which of the variables is affected by Q. And that's what's important. So the general formula when it comes to working out the second moment of area for a rectangle, that is characterized by some variable B times some variable D cubed over 12. What does that mean? When it comes to identifying what B is, B is the side of the section that will be normal to the deforming load. Okay? So that's essentially what B would be. So if you have a beam section and you look at the cross-sectional profile, it's simply that length that is 90 degrees to the deforming load. So hopefully you've caught that. When it comes to D, that's the side that's in plane to the deforming load. So W, 90 degrees to this side, which will characterize B. And the side that will be affected by the power of three will be the side that's in line or in plane to W, okay? And this also tells us that for a rectangular section, you will have two values of I. So if you look at this diagram here, and you look at this diagram here, you realize that for the same amounts of mass or weight that is deforming the structure, you realize that on one side, 
the um, sections provide the greater resistance to defamation, whereas with the other, that's sagged quite a bit. So for the diagram on the left-hand side, that's characterizing the situation here, and the diagram on the right-hand side characterizes the situation where the beam is sagging. So you can use a ruler as a simple experiment to think about at what point or what side, when the force applied, does the beam instigate or demonstrate the greatest uh, resistance to defamation. So for the right hand side, so let's use this ruler here. So this is B, so the wider span of um, the section is B, and the thinner part, so the thickness of the ruler is more or less D. So when the load is applied, very little resistance, okay? So what happens if we rotate the B 90 degrees? And this time, we have a situation to what's on the left, whereby this part there, so the thickness is now acting as B, which would be the side that will be 90 degrees to the deforming load, and D essentially will be this part. Yeah. So, assuming that there's a load on the structure, normal, which will cause the structure to bend, you realize that because we've got a larger material allowance in this plane against the deforming load, there's greater resistance to bending on this side of the ruler as opposed to this side of the ruler. So less resistance. So if B is excessively larger than D, you have this situation. And if B is excessively larger than B, you have this. So this tells us that to increase resistance against deformation, it's sensible to increase the material condition in the plane to the deforming load, as opposed to the side that, or the plane that is normal, or 90 degrees to the deforming load. Okay, so you need to bear this in mind. So if this were to be given in an exam context, you need to be very careful. If the examiner is not very prescriptive, then you need to work out what um, the value of I is. So the value of I that is larger, depending on the situation, will tell you what is the plane that will enable the beam demonstrate or exhibit that measure of stiffness that you desire. Okay, all right, so we'll move along. All right, so, what happens if you are in a situation whereby we don't have a beam with a regular um, shape profile? What do we do? And this is where the concept of parallel axis theory comes into play, so Pat. So essentially, all that Pat is, is you can calculate the second moment of inertia of a given beam from any point of reference, as long as that point of reference is parallel to the neutral axis of a given beam structure. So that's essentially what it means. Okay, so I've defined that here. And mathematically, it's represented by this formula. So I, so assuming that I is supposed to be the total uh, area moment of inertia for a given um, beam structure, that'll be equal to I such with GG plus A times H to the power two. It seems complicated, but it's not much to start understanding the concept. So what is IgG? So IgG is basically characterizing the neutral axis in terms of how a given uh, cross-sectional profile has been seg uh, segmented. So that's essentially what IgG is. So it's the individual uh, second moments of error for the individual elements that constitutes the composite form. A represents the area of each segments that constitutes the composite form. And H is basically the distance of the segment's neutral axis to that of the global neutral axis. And that's essentially what these variables mean. So let's explain it in a bit more detail. So let's say you've got this composite form. So the first thing that you do is to segment the form. So in this concept, it will be easy to segment it into three 
shapes or forms to give us three regular forms. So you can call this part segment one or part one or section one is up to you. That will be segment two and that will be segment three. The next part, similar to what we've done before, is to draw parallel um, di um, diagonals from the corners of each form to identify where the central position of the individual forms will be. So this is telling you that before you move on to calculate the second moment of area, you first need to uh, f figure out what where the um, centroid of the shape is. So this is where you have to apply the concepts of centroids and first moments in depicting that. Right, so use that to identify where uh, the individual uh, centroids are for the given segments. And through the individual centroids, this is where the individual neutral axis will be. So let's assume that the neutral axis for form one or shape one or segment one is GG1. Shape two, GG2. Shape three, GG3. Then once you've done that, you use that information to then work out where the global centroid position would be. So this is the centroid for the entire shape. And you introduce the neutral axis, okay? Now, the reason why I'm calling it XI is that this is the neutral axis with respect to the reference axis. So in this instance, the axis that will be here, the horizontal axis that will be characterized by X, and the vertical axis will be Y. So if we had the neutral plane going like so, then that would be the neutral plane with respect to Y. Okay? So that's essentially that. So now that you've done all of that, then you're now ready to calculate for each form or each segment what the second momentum area is. So you first off calculate the area of the segment, then you proceed to use the formula that characterizes the second moment of area for a rectangle in this instance to calculate the individual segments. Then the next part, you also need to work out or measure the distance from the neutral axis to the neutral axis of that particular segment. So in this instance, this would be H1. So to calculate the moment of uh, inertia, for segment one, we use the PAT formula. So I1, which represents the moment of inertia for section one, that'll be equal to IGG1 plus its area times the distance from the global neutral axis of the entire form to the individual uh, neutral axis of the given shape. There we go. And we do likewise for segment two. Calculate the area, use the general formula and calculate the second moment of area for a rectangle. And you then measure the distance from the neutral plane of the entire shape to the neutral plane of that particular segment, so segment two, and use those values to calculate the second moment of area for segment two. So that'll be IGG2 plus area of segment two times the distance from the global axis to the neutral axis or segment two squared. And I think you begin to see the pattern here. So we do likewise for segment three. Measure the distance from the global axis to the, uh, to the uh, individual axis of segment three. Use the general formula and calculate the value of I for a rectangular section. Calculate the area and use that information to work out the total moments of area for segment three. So the total um, of the of these three will give you the total value of I for the composite form. So I IXX is equal to the sum of all the individual second moments of area, which would be I1 plus I2 plus I3. Okay, so hopefully that is clear. So we're now going to use this information to work through a given problem. Expert.